Hello, Martin here, and welcome to episode 4 of Recreating Stockholm in the 1920s. This will be a two-part episode, where we build the area around Stockholm Södra. I have some good news today. First, I've upgraded my computer. The game loads faster and the frame rate is much better. The other good piece of news is that I have now, with all my new memory, activated the mod that gets rid of the zebra crossings. So that solved what was my number one annoyance, and the whole city looks much more realistic now. Another new thing here is that I've decided to pre-build a couple of quarters. I figured that the episodes were getting quite long, and maybe looking at me filling out row after row with buildings isn't that exciting. Also, all the recording and editing takes a long time, and I need to keep the total amount of work down if this is going to have a chance to ever get finished. So I will do that from time to time when it feels appropriate, and show you what I've built before we get started. It will be small areas each time, and nothing of special interest, except, of course, if you happen to live there, then you have my apologies, it's nothing personal. The prominent building here is the school Södra Latin, built in 1891. Around it, many buildings remain the same, except to the east of it. Below here goes the motorway Söderleden today in a tunnel. The construction of that began already in the 30s and was open to traffic in 1945, but until 1984 it wasn't covered and ran as a long, wide and deep trench through Södermalm. So to build that, this area was demolished. The buildings here today are five, six stories, but before the big road construction, they looked like this. So that was a little about the area I prebuilt this time, and here is the result. I also want to show you what happens at the edge of the map when you build a large section of houses like this. A lot of people move in and you get this huge caravan of vehicles into the city. Let's continue south to what is today Medborgaplatsen. Here it starts to get interesting. Until now, we have covered old parts of Stockholm, and much of it looks similar today, but when we move further out, this was the countryside a hundred years ago. There were farms here. Medborgarplatsen was called Södra Mantorget, and next to it was a railway station, Stockholm Södra. It was the first railway station in Stockholm, opened in 1860. Stockholm still has a station called Stockholm Södra, but it lies a few hundred meters further to the west now, and is, of course, underground. Even earlier, this area was a lake called Fatburen. During the Middle Ages, the lake was quite large, it was clean and was good for fishing. But as the years went by, the lake grounded up as it was increasingly used for dumping waste and sewage. In the early 1800s it was described as a stinking, unhealthy marsh, nicknamed the Dead Sea. Finally it was filled in 1850 to prepare for the railway, but a small part of it remained for a long time. I'm using the game's keys to make the walls here. Yeah, and one more thing. I'm using YouTube's free music library and given that I want to stick to a fitting style, it's down to a few dozen songs. So I will have to start reusing them, but many of them are quite good, so I don't really mind. At least I think it's better than moving over to a house or something.
This building is named in memory of King Oscar I and was built as a retirement home for ladies. It still stands today but is currently empty and in bad shape. The new railway tunnel for Citibanan had to go directly under it and to construct that without damaging the building was very complicated. They had to remove a large part of the foundation and replace it with a temporary steel framework. The house now rests directly on the tunnel roof. One remnant of the old railway station is this small building, where the head of the station used to live. You can find it today in a somewhat secluded area behind the high-rise Södertun. This is Liljenhofska palatset, also known as Engelska huset. It's from 1670 and still stands in the corner of Medborgarplatsen today. If you think it looks taller here in the model than in reality, then you're right. The modern Medborgarplatsen is a few meters higher than this railway area. First, the tunnel for the metro was built beneath Götgatan in the 30s and nowadays there is also a parking lot directly under Medborgarplatsen. If you visit the bar Snaps in the Engelska huset, go downstairs and out of the backside, then you stand at the original street level.
Here is the old station building. It was used from when the station opened in 1860 until around the time of this model and was demolished in the late 20s. The new station, situated close to where Stockholm Söder is today, was opened in 1926, but I didn't include that and went for this old one instead. Here is Engelska huset again. I realized it would look better if I added two of these buildings together and removed parts of the roof. On that note, let's have a break here and continue in the next episode. Thank you for watching.